This video, I'm gonna show you how to use your Japanese Joe or your other martial arts short staff for self-defense. Grab your staff and follow me. You're gonna warm up with this wrist roll. Start with your hand perpendicular to the ground. I'm holding the staff between my first finger and my thumb, and I'm going to allow it to go behind the hand. This hand is important. Keep it there so it doesn't hit the ground. And then turn your hand under. Bring it up again, turn your hand under. Once you get it, turn it into an unassisted wrist roll. Bring that to a stop, and then same thing on the other hand. Start perpendicular to the ground, but it goes in the back of the hand, and this hand just flips over and grabs it. The other hand is there to allow you to learn how to do it. Once you get it, unassisted. Now I wanna show you how to use that to build strength in your hands, which is the whole reason for it. You're not gonna use this wrist roll in a fight or for self-defense but you will use it to build strength in your hands so that you win the fight. Now do that wrist roll and go to the other wrist roll. But start to increase the speed by pushing. When it stops, push it back over, push it back over. This is gonna start to build stronger hands and wrists, better handling of your walking stick doubles as a Japanese Joe, or maybe it's the other way around. So it makes this such a great weapon. It's not too tall, so you can practice inside. Plus you can go anywhere with it, and it looks like a walking stick. The long staff is a little bit more obvious. Who cares what other people think? But if you want something that's not as obvious, carry the short staff. Let's get to the strikes. You're gonna put yourself behind the staff. Put the staff between you and the bad guy, you and your opponent. From here, you just point your thumb. That brings the staff up. To the back hand. From here, you're going to slide in almost like a pull cue, but you're sliding into the center of their body. You're going to hit them in one of these soft spots, something that's going to stop them from attacking you. So you bring it in, slide in, bring it back. Slide in, bring it back. Now this is an ambidextrous weapon. That means you have to be able to use it on both sides, put it in the other hand, bring it back up by pointing that thumb. Slide it in, slide it in. Now, I want you to learn how to change hand positions without ever taking your hand off your weapon. You're going to train in a way that allows you to have positive contact with your weapon at all times. It won't be as easy for them to knock it out of your hand or take it away from you if you develop this technique. What I'm doing is I'm sliding one hand over the other hand, they're both making contact with the staff, and then turn, so the hand that was on top is now on the bottom. Slide it back, slide up, and back, and here's how you're gonna practice with it. You're gonna do that spearing strike with the one hand in front, and then you're gonna slide, change positions, change feet, strike on the other side. Slide, strike, slide, strike. When you strike, Turn your wrists over and lock it. This also keeps it from coming out of your hand. Slide, strike, slide, strike. Now I'm a little off at the angle so you can see what I'm doing, but I want you to go straight in the middle. Pick a target and strike the target. Slide your hand, strike the target. Now without taking your hands off your jaw, I want you to learn the next technique. One hand is gonna be sliding down the length of the jaw and applying forward pressure, either coming straight down, hitting them right here in the top, or at an angle to the temple, to the clavicle, hit them here, to the ribs, to the knee. Any of these angles or straight down the middle. Your wrist, on the other hand, is gonna turn. This hand is actually pulling like it would a sword. It's pulling the weight and controlling the weight of the strike. This is creating the power, this bottom hand. Top hand is accelerating the strike. So you're adding power and speed, and you're also pushing it where you want it to go. You're controlling the angle of attack with the top hand. So from here, straight down the middle, and then like before, slide your hands past each other. Other hand goes in the bottom, 
this hand goes up a little bit and then it slides down, turning the back hand, striking here. Bring your hands to the outsides of the staff. Turn this one over, turn this one under, over your head, strike the middle. This is how you're gonna practice. Hands apart, one on each side, one over, one under. So they're facing each other. Over your head, here, slide it out. Step so that the front foot becomes the same side as the hand that's on the top. My right hand is on top, my right foot's forward. Now the next one. You're gonna take your hand to the top, turn it like you did before, but instead of sliding it down on the top of their head, you're going to slide it behind you. You're gonna use this motion to strike somebody who's back there or to set up the next block or the next strike. From here, I'm going to bring my hand in and up at this angle, creating an arc. Now, if someone's punching you straight in, all the force that they're generating is coming in here. If they're coming down here, it's all coming on that center line. If they're coming, if they have a stick in their hand or a knife or a sword, they're coming down here. All the energy is right here on that edge or on a punch right there in the front on those knuckles. If you try to stop here, even in the movies, the movies where the guy grabs the hand and whatever, that's not real. But to try to stop the punch here, you can deflect it a little bit, knock it away, but it's easier if you push it off that center. Right. It's coming in, blocking to the side, becomes more effective, and they do it parrying and boxing. It's really important if they have a bladed weapon, meaning a knife or a sword or machete, because they'll cut your stick in half and they'll still get you. So you're gonna hit the side. Usually the blade is on one side, maybe sometimes two sides, but it's not on the side. So as they're coming in this way, trying to get you here, or they're coming in here, trying to spear in, you're gonna push it off the center line and not cut your weapon. So both hands to each side, turn the back hand, palm up, turn the front hand, palm down, and push behind your body. Once it's in this position behind your body, you can do that rolling motion. The back hand is coming up in an arc. Think of smacking someone across their face. The front hand is turning in this position. So from here, I'm blocking. I put it behind me and I block forward. This motion here is gonna be the hardest part at the beginning, but you'll get it quickly if you don't quit. One palm down on the front hand, palm up on the back hand, and now step in and block, pull, strike over your head, step and hit them on the top of their head. This is how I want you to practice today. Your hand goes to the end, put behind your body, Remember, palm up, palm down, your right leg's back, my right hand is back, step forward and block, pull back a little bit, spear into their throat, bring it up over your head and strike. Now I want you to see the hand changes from here the left hand, my right hand is back, so the left hand palm down, I push. I bring that forward. I pull the left hand back. The right hand just slides along the length of the staff. I turn my hands over to get that locking motion, and then I push, spearing into their body or their throat. That's that spearing strike, and then I'm gonna change hands from here one more time. My right hand is now facing palm down left hand facing palm up. I bring it up over my head and bring the strike down forcefully hard, just like a sword strike but sliding. <sighs> Take your time, figure out the hand positions first, each one separately, the overhead strike. And again, you can do this at the angle, you can do it here, you can do it to the knee, and then practice the spearing. And then push it back and practice the blocking. those three together, mix them up a little bit for your freestyle, put any questions or comments you have in the comment section below. I'll see you on the next video.